everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly flavored and anointed and appointed? And, and it's a good night to die. <laughs> oh, glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestined us to the adoption as of sons by the Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. To the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, I want you to see that the word time is plural, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will that we who first trusted in Christ should be the, to the praise of his glory. In him you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, to the praise of his glory. The fullness of times fullness of times there's three times there's time past time present and time of future three times of fullness why because each has a completion cycle that it must be fulfilled <clears throat> and what is it in each cycle there's a purpose of Christ Jesus to be fulfilled he's got a purpose for every cycle and it's in this reality it's for this reality. So the fullness of times is past, present, and future time. Each has a completion cycle to, the, to fulfill or to accomplish a person of, a purpose of Christ in this reality. In this reality. We are called to fulfill these things. We're doing it for him. Amen. Because we are the body and he is the head. In Matthew 24, in verse 32. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. The fig tree represents Israel. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the door. Surely I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away but my words will by no means pass away. It's prophetically spoken. Heaven and earth will pass away, but Christ's words will remain forever. The what? Remain for what? Ever. Generation is associated with present. Heaven is associated with future. Earth is associated with past, past time. So again, we go back to the fullness of times. This generation is present time. Heaven is future time. Earth is past time. So we must continue to learn or lean on his words of promise. See, and that's how he's teaching, leaning on his words. Leaning on his words, leaning on his words, his promises, leaning on them. 
You know, if you're walking at night down the sidewalk and you see a lamppost that's lit, if you want to read something, you know what you're going to need to do? Get under that lamppost. You're going to lean on it. Why? Because you can see better. But too many times we begin to lean on other things than his promises, than his word. We begin to lean on our emotions. We begin to lean on our circumstances. We begin to lean on our talents, our abilities, and all the others, our carnality, our emotional attachments. In fact, people lean on their sicknesses more than they do God's words. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord when you feel like it. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. That means all the time. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes, wise guys. <laughs> Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be what? Health. Everyone say health. That's healing to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase, so your barns will fill, be filled with plenty and your vats will what? Overflow with new wine. In other words, stop leaning on your emotional feelings, your worst first thinking. You notice that so many times, you know, it might, you might be sneezing or something, the first thing, oh, I must be sick. Or you, you something, you get bit by a bug and you think, oh, my God, I got cancer. You know, I mean, yeah, there's worse first thinking all the time. Oh, I got a pain in my back. Oh, no, it's, I got this disease or whatever it is. You know, what the enemy's always trying to focus you to the pain. Worse first thinking. Then people run to the phone instead of the throne. Aches and pains and sicknesses, lacks and families, bank accounts, talents, they're still leaning on all these things. Carnal, foolish reasoning. Carnal, foolish reasoning. Hmm. Sometimes people treat their lives as an uh, elimination. It's like going, you know, being a backyard mechanic. Well, if this doesn't work, we'll do this. The next thing they know, they got a pile of two uh, uh, parts and everything, <laughs> and none of them fit the right car. <laughs> <laughs> Carnal, soulish reasoning. What does that mean? What, why, and when? <laughs> Always asking that. But what? But why? But when? Stop leaning on yourself and start leaning on his words of promise. You know, one time I was, I was working on, I think it was mom's car. It was cold out. I mean, you could see your breath. It was almost freezing. And it was about 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and I was working. And the wrench slip hit me in the mouth, busted my tooth in half. In fact, half of it came out. I was spitting everywhere every time I said hello to somebody. And I was so ticked off, I wanted to, I saw the tooth on the ground, I wanted to smash it, and I heard, no, don't do that. And I didn't. I put it in my pocket. And I kept saying, no pain in Jesus' name, no pain in Jesus' name, no pain in Jesus' name, no pain in Jesus' name. And I had no pain. I bled everywhere. I walked in the house, and, my, and Mom was there, and my wife was there, and they're like, what happened to you? They were more panicked than I was. I didn't have any money at the time. This was when we first started. I mean, I didn't have no money to go to a doctor, and I didn't have nothing. I had 25 bucks in my pocket. And so I kept praying. I kept saying, no pain in Jesus' name. I didn't have any pain in Jesus' name. I had a fat lip. That's all I got. And, of course, the tooth was busted up to the root almost. And uh, so I, I, I opened up the phone book. I said, Lord, where do you want me to go? I can't walk around like this forever. I certainly can't preach like this. I'll be spitting on everybody. And so I opened up, and I just pulled my finger, and he said, go there. And I called him, and the guy says, yeah, it'll cost you 25 bucks. I said, praise God, I'm on there. I went there, cost me 25 bucks. He told me what the problem was. But the first question he said to me is, aren't you in pain? I said, no, 
I'm not in pain. Don't say that I'm in pain. I'm not in pain. He says, you're not in pain? I said, no. He says, that's ripped to the root. I said, I'm not in pain. He said, well, 25 bucks for me to look at it, but you got about six, $700 in billing to fix it. I said, I'm out of here. So I left there, lost my last 25 bucks. I said, Lord, there's got to be somewhere. And now I want you to understand that this is day before Christmas Eve. So, you know, most places are closed now. So I called this one guy. I said, man, you got to know somebody. You, 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 you know everybody that can help me. He said, you can try this one dentist. I, he says, but they're probably not in the office. I called over. The guy was in his office. I begged him on the phone. Please, I have my tooth still. He says, you still have your tooth? I said, yeah. He says, come on, and we'll see what we can do. I went in to go see him. And the first words out of his mouth was, aren't you in pain? I said, no, I'm not in pain. Quit telling me I'm in pain. I'm not in pain. No pain in Jesus' name. And he said, man, he looked at it, he goes, I, I, there ain't nothing I can do with this. I said, come on, you got to try. Here's my tooth. I pulled it out of a Ziploc baggie. <laughs> I gave it to him. <laughs> he says, all right, let me see what I can do. And he got this glue stuff and got this blue light, put it on her, sanded it all down. And a couple seconds later, he gives me a mirror. He says, how does it look? I got up and gave him a kiss. I said, this is awesome. Thank you, Jesus. I left that place. I said, what do I owe you? He said, nothing. He said, Merry Christmas. I said, to God be the glory. I was able to speak that night without spitting on anybody. But again, this is an area where, you know, so many times we worst first, and we speak worst first, and what you speak is what's going to happen. And I have learned that when I hurt myself, the first words out of my mouth is, no pain in Jesus' name. You got to go for me. No pain in Jesus' name. Now, I'm not saying that I haven't taken aspirins or whatever, but it's got to start with your mouth. Amen? It's got to start. You know, this morning I woke up. Man, I'm, I went to the gym and everything. I came home and all of a sudden tweaked my back at home, doing nothing, standing there. Uh -huh. Oh. I'm like, oh, get out of here. No pain. I started saying, no pain in Jesus' name. No pain in Jesus' name. And I put ice on it. And I said, no pain in Jesus' name. Then I went on the inverter and all of a sudden, snap. Ah. No pain in Jesus' name. Again, not leaning on our own understanding. We have a tendency to think worse first. Who do I call? What do I take? You take the promises of God Almighty. You lean on his words. You got to start with that every time, no matter what's happening. If you get a bad report from a doctor, I don't care. My doctor's Jesus. Amen? And that's what we got to stand on. No pain in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for a good blood re report. <laughs> I've been told I've had all kinds of stuff. And after praying, I got another blood test. <laughs> you ain't got that. You're darn right I don't. Because the benefits of my father says, by his stripes I'm healed. That's a benefit. But see, we're not leaning on that enough. We're not leaning on the promises of God enough. And we all fall short of that. We begin to lean on our own stuff. How can I fix this? Oh, I better call this. Wait a minute. Listen, I had a 46 Chrysler stretch limo. I can't tell you how many times that thing broke down. I'd be stranded. Lord says, you know, an engine's no different than a body. I said, what do I do? He goes, go lay hands on it. And I did. I broke the curse off, command whatever was broken in this vehicle to be healed by the stripes of Jesus. I get in that car and it started up and I took off. I, and it's happened multiple times. And we need to do that more. It, need to be, it needs to be a part of our life. Not just occasionally. It needs to be every day. What comes out of your mouth first is what's going to happen. Amen? And we need to remind each other of it, you know? 
When you start grumbling and complaining, oh man, this, this. No, no, wait a minute. By, by, your stri- by his stripes, no pain in Jesus' name. No pain in Jesus' name. You know, there's power in the name of Jesus. Remember, every knee shall bow. Every sickness must bow. Everything must bow in the name of Jesus. But everything's given according to your faith. The more you speak, the more you believe. The more your faith gets built up. Oh, yes, it does. Psalm 18, verse 28. Let's speak it together. For you will what? Light my lamp. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. For by you I can run against a troop. By my God I can leap over a wall. As for God, his way is what? Perfect. And the word of the Lord is what? It's proven. It's already been proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. For who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except for our God? It is God who arms us with strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer and sets me on my high places. He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bronze bow, bow or a bow of bronze. You have also given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand has held me up. Your gentleness has made me great. You enlarged my path under me so my feet did not slip. I have pursued my enemies. How many of y'all know sickness is an enemy? How many of you know pain is an enemy? How many of you know fear is an enemy? How many of you know debt's an enemy? These are all enemies. When we begin to realize these are all enemies of ours. Amen? I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn back again till they were what? Destroyed. Hmm. See, so many times we give up. We don't stay at it. You know, a tree doesn't come down with one axe. Sometimes it takes four, five, six, seven times. I have wounded them so that they could not rise. They have fallen under my feet. For you have armed me with strength for the battle. You have subdued under me those who rose against me. You have also given me the necks of my enemies so that I destroyed those who hated me. They cried out, but there was none to save. Even the Lord, but he did not answer them. Then I beat them as fine as the dust before the wind and cast them out like dirt in those streets. Your enemies are your thoughts. Your worst first thinking. Mindsets, strongholds, deceptions, emotional oppression. Woe's these measies. Oh, woe is me. I'm the only one that has this. I'm the only one that goes through this. Labels, aches, pains. Attachments, all of these things, sicknesses, disease, all of these things are our enemies, dead, like we just talked about. They're your enemy. Those are the ones that we're to pursue and destroy. Amen? Carnal reasoning and carnal understanding, all of these things, emotional stuff, they're our enemies. They're not our friends. Amen? You know, most of our Afflictions are self-inflicted. Amen? How many know food can be your enemy? Music. Certain books, demonic things, wisdom from below. <laughs> it's your enemy. The White House. It's your enemy. The Democratic Party. That's why they're called the Democratic Party. It's your enemy. Socialism is your enemy. Communism. All of these things. They're your enemies. Why? Because they're the enemies of righteousness and justice. They're the enemies of healing. Deliverance. How many old drugs are your enemies? Pharmakia, which means black magic, witchcraft, and sorcery. So your pharmacy can be your enemy. Amen? 
people who are hooked on pain medications. Those are your enemies. It's a deception. It's a temporary fulfillment of feeling better. But it doesn't heal you. Amen? And then you got to take more to feel better. And next thing you know, you don't have any, and you're really feeling bad. Hallelujah. Why? Because you didn't start off with leaning on his words. Instead of, we got to stop leaning on our words and his words. 2 Corinthians 10.4. For the weapons of our warfare are what? They're not physical or carnal or emotional, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. What's a stronghold? A memory lie. That's something of your past, isn't it? Or something you picked up in the present. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. In other words, his promises of his word. Bringing every thought into captivity, a get rid of the worst first thinking to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish. Didn't we just talk about pursuing your enemy and crushing them? To punish all disobedience. Now, your enemies are disobedient to the word of God. When your obedience is what? Fulfilled, pulling down strongholds, memory lies of the past that cause arguments in the present. And any other antichrist thoughts. And gather all dimensional times of demonic influence. Past, present, and future. Why? Because you are in pursuit to remove and replace these darkness attacks of demonic influence. With the light. Which is obedience. When your obedience is fulfilled. God will manifest. Amen? Obedience to what? His words. His sayings. Not leaning on our soulish, selfish, but leaning on his words of promise. Jesus did the same thing. What did he say? It is written when the devil attacked him. He didn't say, well, you know, I really don't feel so good about this. <laughs> he, said, you know, he didn't say, wait a minute, let's do this tomorrow. I need to get something to eat. <laughs> Amen? I mean, he fasted, didn't drink nothing or ate anything for 40 days. Then the devil attacks him. Why? Because the devil loves to attack you at your lowest, weakest part. <laughs> he just said, it is written. Then he spoke it. Amen? He didn't do any worse first thinking at all. As a man thinks, so he is, right? And we need to lean on his words of promise these days more than ever. Psalm 19, verse 7, let's speak it. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Is the law his word? Yeah, everything he speaks is law. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yes, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned, and keeping them there is what? Great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep back your servant also from what? Presumptuous sin. That's a, like assuming. Well, I assumed. Well, I assumed. Cut it out. Stop assuming. We live on fact. We live on truth, not assumption. Amen? You can't assume whatever. You got to know. Details. Well, I thought, why? Hallelujah. Quit thinking. <laughs> keep, keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be what? 
blameless, and I shall be innocent of what? Great transgressions. Oh, here, are you ready for this? Let the what? Words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. In other words, the words of my mouth, let them speak his words. And my focus of my heart to be upon him. Be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my what? My redeemer. My strength and my redeemer. Words of my mouth be yours. And focus of my heart be toward you. For you are my strength and you are my redeemer. Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and what? Trembling. You know, I think some people lose sight of that. They stop working their own salvation out. They want somebody else to work it out for them. For it is God who works in you. He what? Works in you. Both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Is it his good pleasure that we be healthy? Is it a good pleasure that we be prosperous? Amen. Is it his good pleasure that we win every victory? Amen. <laughs> well, then you got to stop leaning on you. <laughs> Amen. And start leaning more on his words of promise. Verse 14. Do all things without what? Complaining and disputing. Oh, that's out of the mouth, isn't it? That you may become blameless and harmless to yourself and others. Children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Holding fast the what? Word of life or the words of his. His words, the words of Jesus. So that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Yes, and if I am being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice of service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. For the same reason, you also be glad and rejoice with me. Wow. Work out. Put into practice his words because they are life changing. They're life changing. Well, I just don't feel like doing it. Well, you ain't going to change and you'll stay an idiot the rest of your life. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, please. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, which is his plan, right? Okay, so is his grace his plan? So is his plan his words? Yes. Be strong in speaking his words. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others. Wow. You, therefore, must what? Endure what? Oh, snap. You're going to endure hardship. Welcome to the earth. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ. <laughs> no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with himself. <laughs> with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seated David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel. For which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains. But the words of God are not chained. They're life-changing and yoke-breaking. Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying. If we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He can't deny himself. A soldier is a warrior. We must endure hardship. In other words, challenges. To overcome with his words of promise. Again, his words are not bound. They're not chained. They're yoke-breaking. 
Jeremiah 17, verse 5. And he wasn't a bullfrog. Thus says the Lord, curse is the man who what? Trusts in himself. He leans on himself. Trusts in man. You know, um, everything must be proven to you. Everything must be confirmed to you. When you get a report from a doctor or even from a mechanic, always get a second opinion. Amen? Always get another opinion. And you take that opinion to the Lord. And you get counsel from the Lord, right? And he'll tell you what to do. But some people can't wait. They're too anxious. And many times they step before God, and then it takes longer for something to happen. Amen? That's why divine order is so important. That's why the Bible says, Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added. Praise God. Curses a man who trusts in himself or in man and makes his flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. In other words, it says that your heart departs from the Lord. Why? Because you're not putting him first. You're not leaning on his words of promise. You're leaning on yours. You're leaning on your own reasoning. For he shall be like a sh shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes. In other words, you're going to miss opportunities from God. Why? Because the enemy loves distractions. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited. But blessed is the man who what? Trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not what? Will not what? Is fear your friend or enemy? Enemy. When heat comes, but its leaf will be green. It will not be what? Oh, there's that wonderful word. Anxious. And will not be anxious in a year of drought, nor cease from yielding fruit. Oh, the heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who could know it? I, the Lord, search the heart, test the thoughts of my people, and even give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. Cursed or blessed? Continue to lean on yourself or continue to lean on the promises of God? We have a choice. Psalm 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, all my soul, that your mind, your will, your emotions, your imagination, your conscience, subconscious, attitude, motive, and desires. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not his benefits or his words of promise. Who forgives all your iniquities. Who heals all your diseases and all your aches and pains. Who redeems your life from what? Destruction. Hello. Wait a minute. So if you got something that somebody's diagnosed you with that's life-threatening, that's called destruction. That's your enemy. But he says he redeems your life from this destruction. But if you're not leaning on these things, you don't get them. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things. In other words, his words of promise. So that your youth is what? Yes, I love that part. So that your youth is renewed like a 33-year-old. Like eagles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need renewed youth daily. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. Is oppression your enemy? Yes. You know how many people are oppressed? It's incredible. He made known his ways to Moses. He acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow in anger and abounding in mercy. 
He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, thank God, nor punished us according to our iniquities. Oh, snap. <laughs> For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who reverence him, honor him, respect him, obey him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are what? Dust. Dust in the wind. Hallelujah. We're dust. Benefits of his promises. Amen. Benefits of his promises. You know, Moses had an opportunity tremendously. I mean, I mean, God shows up, takes Moses. They go hang out for 40 days. He doesn't eat nothing or drink nothing. He didn't bring a lunch with him. Because in God's presence, you're sustained. For Moses, it was 10 minutes. It was like the Lord said, okay, take this, write this down. But he got downloaded like the Matrix. 40 days, think about that. 40 days he was in the presence of the glory of God Almighty. Can you imagine that? Glowed. Became a light bulb. You know, it, it's, just, it's just baffling in, in, in that area. And then he, and, and, but here was a guy that, you know, was born in corruption, just like everybody else. But when God touched him, he changed. Nothing was first anymore but the Lord. He was first. And, and he waited to hear what God had to say. And sometimes God didn't speak to him for weeks. And everybody else was driving him crazy. What did God say? He didn't say anything yet. When are we moving? We're going to stay in this place. Who's going to feed us? Is there a shoemaker around here? You know, all of these things Moses was attacked with. And he kept running to the throne. He waited. And then when God spoke, he released it. Now we have the Lord living in us. We have no excuse. He speaks to us daily. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I heard this uh, thing today. And uh, it was about this... Uh, this robber was breaking in this house. And, and when he was in there gathering, it was at night, and he was in there gathering stuff. He was opening drawers. And, and he heard this voice saying, Jesus is watching you. And he's looking around. He's going, that must be my imagination. And he continues doing what he's doing. And his voice came back again and said, Jesus is watching you. And he's like, what? And he shined a light over, and there was this parrot. And this parrot was telling him, Jesus is watching you. He's going, you're smoking. You're, you're. He's freaking out because this parrot's speaking and telling him Jesus is watching him. And he said, well, what's your name if Jesus is watching me? And he said, Moses. He said, where'd you get your name from? He said, from the, the same people that named that Rottweiler Jesus. That dog went after that dude, man. <laughs> he watched. The, Jesus was watching him. <laughs> You'll get it later, anyways. <laughs> We're going to close at First Peter chapter five, verse six. Therefore, what? Humble, humble, humble yourself. That means submit. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. In other words, don't quit. You keep speaking his promises until it manifests. Why? Because you're speaking things and driving things out. Casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you. Be sober, which means alert. Be vigilant, which means what? Consistent in speaking his promises. 
because the adversary, the devil, who walks about like a roaring lion, is going after you, seeking whom he may what? Devour, deceive, manipulate, attack, plague. Resist him steadfast in the what? In the faith. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by all of your brotherhood in the world. So you are not the only one. You're not the only one that gets bad news. <laughs> but may the God of all grace, his plan of escape, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have freaked out a little bit, <laughs> that it may bring what? Perfect you, establish you, and strengthen you so that you are settled and maintain that position. Maintaining that position. What's the position? Leaning on the words of his promise and speaking them. Leaning on the words of his promise. Why? The Bible says something very specifically. His words will not return void. But if you don't know it, the devil knows you don't know it. If you're not building yourself up in your most holy faith by praying in tongues, the devil knows your faith isn't backed by your words. I've been ill. I, I, many things have happened to me. I've broken arms, broken legs, all kinds of stuff. And God healed me every time. Every time. And one time I refused. I wouldn't go to the hospital. I said, no, you're going to heal me. He says, if you don't go, you're going to die. I said, okay. And I went. They told me I had two hours to live. If I wouldn't have gone. I mean, I'm so much, I could go on and on and on on how many things. Playing football, busting up a leg, busting up an arm, busting up whatever. God healed me. Financial circumstances, God provided. Did it come right away? Not every time. It has to start with the right words. Those are conditions. See, we're meeting the conditions for something to be released. Faith comes by what? Hearing. So our focus is to meet the conditions so that something can be released. You can't make the conditions. You must meet the conditions of the eternal realm, the true reality. Not according to the false reality. The true reality. And you'll find God will manifest. But don't quit. Don't grow weary. Stand strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Amen. We are in crazy times right now. I mean, you don't know what's going to happen next. <laughs> and we don't need to know, to be honest with you. What we know is sufficient enough. And when God wants you to know something, he'll tell you. Amen? Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. We're honored and blessed. We love you. We exalt you. And, Lord, we, we, we repent right now. We ask for your forgiveness of all the times that we've turned to leaning on ourselves and not continuously speaking your words of promise that your words are powerful and that they don't return void. So, Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. Please continue to enlighten us, refresh us, restore us, and renew us, regenerate us so that we stand upon your word of promise, speaking them, believing that it's going to happen so that you may be glorified in everything we do. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.